the insatiable desire to go faster, to be the fastest. Now, whether we're talking cars or planes or even our own two feet, mankind has spent countless hours and trillions of dollars to try and get from point A to point B faster than they ever have before. Now, in the world of mountain bikes, one company's new breed of super long bikes claims to be able to do just that, make you faster. Now, that's quite the claim. Enter the Pole Evo Link 140. With gargantuan proportions, this bike is five inches longer than a size large Yeti SB5. The head angle is so slack that it would feel at home with most modern downhill race bikes. In fact, at the time of this taping, the size large Pole Evo Link 140 is the longest trail bike in the world. Yet, maybe the most unexpected part about this bike is that it's not supposed to be just some downhill monster. This is a 140 millimeter travel 29er trail bike that's meant to be able to go up the mountain just as well as it can go down. It's supposed to be fast, but the real question is, just how fast is it? This bike is ridiculous! The speed that it's holding is just immense! Like, this is some rough terrain and it's just soaking it up! Oh gosh! Whoa! So where does all this speed even come from? Well, in a word, from stability. Now this bike has 510 millimeters of reach, 455 millimeter chain stays, and couple that with a 78 degree seat tube angle, and you've got a bike that is constantly putting the rider right in the middle of these two big 29 inch wheels. Now what that means for you is that it balances the weight between the front and rear wheels. And so that means whether you're climbing or descending, you've got tons of traction, loads of confidence, unless whether you're pushing into a corner or hitting a high speed straight, you've got that traction and control at your fingertips at all times. It really does work. All right, so you've seen me ride this bike, but the thing is I have never ridden these trails in my life. Everything that I'm hitting is a big giant surprise every time. But we've got Kevin here and Kevin uh, rides this area all day, every day. He's built some cool stuff in the area. And so if there's anybody that knows the trails, it's probably you, right? I, I hope so. The bike he's on, he's on a 26 inch wheeled, 68 degree head angled bike. Um, and so we're gonna throw him onto this. These two bikes could not be more different. So uh, we're gonna send him down um, one of the trails that he's uh, done plenty of times. Yeah. And we got the gimbal on him with a GoPro running. So have a rip down the trail and let us know what you think. Here goes. Oh my god. Wow, that was really fast. That was much faster than my other bike. 
all that chunky loose stuff, no problem. Just finished the run down. That's a fun run too, it's fast. Yes. And loose. Very loose. And like a couple of like tighter sort of berms. So pretty good overall on this bike. And you also had a chance to climb up too. Yeah, right? I so, did. So going from your bike that you normally ride to this, let's talk about the downhill for a second. Like what was that like and what, what was different? Well, it was way faster than my other bike. Uh, just being so long, it was really stable on those baby head rocks. Like normally I'm brake checking here and there and I'm spotting my lines, you know, and making sure I'm kind of weaving around the rocks. Yeah. This thing, it was so planted and stable. It. Yeah, I just plowed it, pulled up the front a little bit and yeah. it just went over everything. So, was, that, so that's all well and good, but like, what was it going into the corners? Did you notice like anything different? Was it pushing? Um, no, I didn't notice too much pushing. Mm -hmm. um, when I climbed up, there's some tight corners. I rode it the same way I rode my other bike. I had no problems. Sweet. You know, climbing up, it was easier because it was longer and some of the, the chunk and the ledges going up, I yeah. found it easier to climb. On my other bike, I'm way back, like over the back wheel, it feels like. On this, it just felt like I was floating in the middle. Do you think it made you faster? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, sending it off of one of the jumps, I grabbed way more brake than I do on my other bike. And you this, were like, oh, more yeah, speed. and I didn't know how much I could really give this thing in the corner. I gave it more than my other bike because, you know, it wanted it, but it could yeah. take more speed than I was offering. You know, you can do the climbs, and you're going to be faster going down for sure. Yeah, and That's, you're going to have more fun too. It's pretty fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Thanks for giving it a run down the hill. I hope oh, it was my fun. pleasure. It's awesome, man. Uh, Cheers. Can I hold on to it for a bit? No. Uh -huh. After ripping the Evo Link from Kevin's cold dead hands, I've spent the last number of days sending the bike down and up everything I can. And whether it's been incredibly high speed rocky runs or drops or flowy roller coasters or jumps, I cannot shake the feeling that the Evo Link is the future of bike design. You know, in a world of incremental updates and kind of a me too approach to bike design over the last couple of decades, the Pull Evo Link 140 was a total breath of fresh air. And I'm finding it's not just different for the sake of being different. The people at Pull really believe that this is where geometry should be and where it should be going. And from my experiences over the last few days, I'm inclined to believe them. Especially when I'm getting private messages from Kevin, our test rider, saying, dude, I just set the fastest time on that trail that I rode by over 14 seconds on this bike. 14 seconds! That's crazy. So is this the fastest bike in the world? I can tell you for certain that it's the fastest bike I have ever ridden. It's the fastest bike that Kevin has ever ridden. It's the fastest bike that Joe, our cinematographer for the weekend, has ever ridden. And that was the same story for every single person that got on that bike. They all said, wow, this thing is ridiculously fast. So I'm gonna be taking this bike all across the world over the next few months to test the limits of not only myself, but this new school of geometry. And even how the bike like this works as an everyday rider. But until then, all I can say is, you've gotta try one of these things. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Leave a comment down below about what you think about this bike. Um, subscribe to the channel to see all those future videos, and I will see you guys soon. Cheers.